Welcome, Chapel Hill, once again. Uh, so glad to have you, and I want to welcome you to this uh, incredible Mother's Day panel that we have. Um, we have been uh, in the middle of this message series, um, This Changes Everything, and we are right in the midst of the most unusual Mother's Day that any of us have experienced. Uh, and so I've got this incredible panel of ladies here with me today, which I'm going to introduce in just a few moments. Uh, ju but before I do, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, moms have had to walk through some uh, unusual circumstances. Uh, moms that didn't intend to be homeschool moms have had to become homeschool moms. Uh, moms who were homeschool moms didn't realize they would be trapped in the house with the kids as long as they've had to be trapped in the house with the kids. Uh, we've had uh, moms who have walked through difficulties as it relates to job loss or moms that are managing the tensions of having to work from home and to homeschool their kids. And moms that have had to deal with health challenges, their own health challenges, maybe health challenges of family members. Uh, they're, they're, they're single moms who are in circumstances that have been uh, even more increased in the complexity of how how to manage work and and children uh, and and even on the unfortunate side there are moms who have even lost family members during this time this has been a very challenging and difficult time but in the middle of all of that I want to remind you that motherhood is still such an incredible blessing and we want to celebrate the blessing of motherhood today. In fact, I want to read a passage of scripture that celebrates God's blessing on motherhood, and it comes from Proverbs 31. Verse 27, it says, She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Motherhood is such a blessing, and, and I am so fortunate to have with me this, this panel of Proverbs 31 women up here uh, ready to lead us in this incredible discussion. Let me introduce to you this illustrious panel. Well, first of all, I have right next to me a mother that I'm very familiar with, uh, <laughs> my wife of 20 years, Tamika Baker, and the mother of our five children. Uh, next to her, we have Tiffany Casey, who is a, a mom of an 18-month-old 18 18 <laughs> baby girl. Uh, I don't want to rush her to 18 years yet. Um, and we also have uh, Stacy Garner, who is with us. She's a single mom of five kids. I take my hat off to you. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. Uh, we also have Michelle Pitts, who's a mother of two beautiful kids. And then right here on the end, we have Shirley Peterson, who is the mom of 10 kids and 10 grandkids. Her 10th grandkid is on the way. So come on, just, just give a, a shout out in the chat to these incredible moms. <laughs> just give them some applause. Uh, we're, we're just so glad to have you here with us. Um, and so I, I want to just begin to to start this discussion off and just acknowledge some of the things that we just talked about here, that these are unprecedented times. We continue to hear that uh, in the news over and over. Um, we've never seen things like we've seen um, here. And, 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 and there have been some challenges and some difficulties that, that people have walked through. And, and so I'd like to maybe open up this discussion to give you moms a little bit of time to talk a little bit about perhaps some of the struggles that, that you have had. So here's the, the first question I'd like to toss to our panel. In what ways have you been stretched and challenged as a mom during this time? Well, I'll go. <laughs> uh, with an 18-month-old, um, it's hard to not be able to go places because she gets kind of stir crazy. We might go to the library once a week in normal life, you know, but right now I'm just trying to entertain her myself and we go for a lot of walks. Um, Sometimes we just drive around <laughs> because yes. we're bored, you know. But that's been, it took me a long time in the beginning to get used to that, to being at home, just us, all the time. It was, it was hard at first. Yes, yeah. absolutely. For me, uh, I homeschool um, our two children, and so I spend a lot of time with them on a daily basis. But this idea of actually being present, um, I'm very good at sitting with my children, talking to them, and letting my mind 
go 50 different ways. And the Lord revealed to me, gosh, just a few weeks ago when I was talking to my daughter, Caitlin, on the bed that um, to, to be in that moment, to be intentional and to not let myself go off to the next distraction. You would think that as things started to slow down, the distractions would go away, but I was still really good at finding other things, even through all of this, to let myself get preoccupied with. And to really be in that moment with my children, the season that he has me in right now, and to work with them, develop a relationship with them, and not to chase the next thing. Yeah, that's good. I've been challenged a little bit because I have such routines that I really enjoy. And when you have more people around more of the time, you find that all of a sudden you can't do those same things and you have to be very um, um, kind and try to um, put up with maybe some things that you're not used to. So that's been a little bit of a challenge of just um, working around other people's schedules and having them get in your stuff. For me, um, I've noticed with the work mentality, having to work an enormous amount of time from home, as well as teaching the five children at the same time with just all different age groups, it's been a significant challenge, yes. <laughs> especially during COVID-19, because I never I came from a situation where before I was homeschooling, when my children were smaller. Yes. But then I went back to corporate America, and now I'm back to essentially homeschooling again. I realized that that is not my season any longer. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a wake-up call, but it's one of those wake-up calls that I'm finding to be more gratifying because I'm seeing exactly what my children are learning and what they're struggling with. So I get to have a little bit more hands-on knowledge because a lot of times we would figure the technology is there, but that day-to-day -day interaction with the um, teachers, it makes a huge difference. Yes, yes. I, I, I can identify with what you said, Stacy. too, is um, I homeschooled, too, at one point and then went to work and now back with the kids and thinking. I thought that it would be easier, like, oh, hey, we've done this. I mean, even <laughs> telling my kids, like, we've done this, but it's right. not. It's, it's different. Um, they're all doing their, you know, Zooming and all of that stuff. And um, I think just finding even with my girls, my younger um, girls, working with them, has been the biggest challenge because they both want my attention. Um, and I think just trying to divide my attention um, to all of my kids and they all have varying needs. And I think the challenge for me is I feel like I kind of come up short at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about that a lot, just feeling like, oh, I was with this one, but I wasn't with this so and so. Just trying to divide my time and, um, I don't know, and, and not feeling at the end of the day like, okay, I just, feel like I just blew that day, you know, but also to just kind of remembering, um, as Michelle said, to just be in the moment mm -hmm. and just be there um, for them. So it's, it's been a challenge. Yeah. I, you know, and I've, I've heard from a number of different moms, even as I've been making phone calls during this time and connecting with our, our members that, that, that there's a lot of stresses. Uh, there, there have been some blessings, but there's been a lot of stresses and a lot of adjustments and accommodations needing to be made. Um, and, and, and I think sometimes in, in our church world, we, we get sometimes so happy in our faith, and, and, but it's not always that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's a real struggle. Sometimes there's some, some real tears that that people are sharing and I'm sure some of you moms out there recognize that but one, one of the things that, that I want to kind of toss out there is really this this idea that sometimes it's okay not to be okay mm -hmm. in fact I believe that, that, that the scripture teaches us that that's a present reality and and we see that even in Psalm 22 it it, it starts out this way it says my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. This is such a powerful passage that, that, that the, the psalm writer recognizes his anguish, and he offers up the reality of that anguish and, and 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 oftentimes moms I think you have to give yourselves permission to cry out to God that you don't have to always have it together 
Uh, and, and, and I like how this, this passage continues. In the very next verse, it reads, Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted you and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. What, what I love about this passage is that you see both things at play. You see the, the heart cry. You see the anguish. You see the, the, the admission of the struggle. And in the midst of that, you also see a heart that cries out to God in the middle of that, that praises God in the middle of that, that looks to God as the answer in the middle of that. Can, I'm, I'm curious, moms, how do, you, how do you relate to that? Personally, I go to the basement and scream. You know, sometimes you just got to let it out. Because I know during the first couple of weeks, definitely by the 14th day, I was, I was at my wit's end. And I had to figure out a new type of normal, a new schedule, a new routine. And at the end of the day, there was no new to it. It was just basically going back to your foundation and wondering how did our predecessors do it before and it was like, okay, one of these moments, I had to go to the basement. I screamed. My kids was like, mommy, is something wrong? But it was nothing wrong. It was just one of those moments, like, sometimes you just got to, like, let it out. And so then you go back into it, and they, they're looking at you like, is she okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, it was like that releasing moment. To me, it felt as though that was my aha, and I can relate to that scripture, definitely. <laughs> That's great. I think for me, um, this time has truly been a time of surrender. Um, you know, that, that scripture, that passage you read, I mean, that just really kind of frees me um, because I don't have all the answers. And now that we are home, you know, with our kids day in, day out, um, we do see their struggles and things that they need help with. and. Um, as a mom, you know, we are just naturally, we want to be, we want to be everything for them. We want to, we want to help them and we want to um, sometimes do too much for them. Um, mm -hmm. But it's because we just want the best for them and, and we just want things to go well for them. And um, sometimes, and now that we've been home and sometimes we've been bumping heads, especially with our older ones, um, we get pushback and you know, we know what's best for our kids and they don't really want best sometimes. And as a parent, um, it's been kind of frustrating um, some, you know, some of these days because um, it, it seems like all the, the things that we know to do, they're not accepting it. And, mm -hmm. and, and just try, just like really just throwing my hands up saying, God, I don't, I don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know all the answers and what I'm doing is not working. And, you know, God, these are your kids and help me to see them the way you see them. And um, so, you know, maybe I need to go down to the basement and scream yeah. a little, <laughs> you know, and, and, and say, my God, my God, where are you, have you forsaken me? But I know God is there with us. And I know just as we are trying to mother and parent our kids, mm -hmm. I feel like God is also trying to parent me yeah, as well, exactly. you know, so... That's, that's a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's trying to parent us. Yes. Uh, and and, and I, th I think there's a, um, a, a hope that we can find in times like this uh, because the reality is even though we have these stressors on the outside, mm -hmm. God is also doing something inside of us um, yes. in this time. Yes. And, and, you know, when, when you find yourself in a struggle, oftentimes there's a, some surprising blessings in the middle of that struggle. And that, that brings me to my next question that I'd like to, to toss out to you. And, and here's that question. Um, what unexpected or surprising things have you discovered about yourself or God during this time? Honestly, this may sound, uh, if I'm honest with myself, um, God is really showing me uh, the condition of my heart and the fact that um, I'm not looking to him for my satisfaction. Uh, John Piper has a quote, this is the battle to be satisfied in God. 
And it's one thing to say it, to put it on my Facebook page and sound all holy and cool, but to realize that every day it is a battle. Am I seeking the Holy Spirit? Am I surrendering to Him and allowing Him to guide me? Or am I allowing myself to, you know, get caught up in the things of this world, or the distractions of this world? And so it is a blessing that we've been able to have this time and the Lord has been able to work on my heart and refine me in this manner. But uh, it's very humbling as well um, when you realize, oh, it's kind of ucky on the inside. <laughs> yes. Yes. I found that I got trapped in um, busyness and my whole life has just been this like struggle to survive and always trying to get to the next thing and do the next thing on my list and try to accomplish things. And um, a lot of times when God puts things in your life, he allows you to put the pause button on and to really evaluate what am I going for? What am I doing? Where am I going with my life? And he was showing me that I was actually running away from the things that he was wanting me to do and to just to purge and to cut out things in my life, get ready for this next season in my life. And I was wanting to run away and not do the hard work and try to shortcut the process. Mm -hmm. um, and not deal with it all. And so this has been a really sweet time. We're, we're living in this limbo land that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's gonna, what we're going to do next. We don't know what next week's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But it's been a really sweet time of just saying, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to look and reevaluate and cut out and add in what needs to happen. So I look at this time as a real um, blessing in disguise of just um, the, the time that he's given us to really evaluate where we're going and what we're doing. Yeah, and one, one thing that I've really learned is the hour that I want to spend with God, you know, at any point in the day, the morning, noon, and night, I don't have time to do that sometimes right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. she don't want to go to sleep, you know. Sometimes it's just a crazy day. So God's been reminding me that the little prayers that I pray, God, just give me wisdom. God, help me. Or, God, please help me, God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that I even say out loud sometimes. Those prayers mean just as much to his heart as all, you know, as an hour that I could spend with him. And sometimes they do more in my spirit than the hour that I'm spending trying to feel holy or feel close to God yes. in my sin, you know. Mm -hmm. When I can cry out in those short bursts and just recognize him in the moment, mm -hmm then I, rec I feel him, you know, I feel his presence. And he always gives that wisdom when I ask him to. Yeah, that's great. That's great stuff. So I, I, love, I love what I'm hearing that you, you're, God is opening up your own heart mm -hmm. to show you things that are there. And, and I believe that's got how God operates through struggle. Like struggles are never intended to destroy us. Struggles are always meant to strengthen us. Yeah. They're always meant to, to open us up to reveal things perhaps that we would not see were we not in a period of struggle. And, and so the Lord is teaching some, some incredible things. A anything else on that before I, I dash to the next question? Good. All right. So I, I've got an, another question I'd like to, to throw out because, again, not only does God reveal things and struggle and teach us things about ourselves but sometimes in the middle of a struggle struggles oftentimes in scripture are referred to as storms and and in a storm uh, and if your ship is in the middle of the, of the sea and it's storming and the waves are raging you need an anchor an anchor to steady the ship and so the question I'd like to toss out is this has, has God given you something from his word through all of this and, or, and, and what perspectives about motherhood is God showing you that maybe can anchor you in this time? I see Shirley <laughs> reaching over there to get her word and her my phone. Word, my word. <laughs> um, oh, man, yes. there's just so much that God has been teaching me through his word. And I, I love how, um, like you said, he doesn't waste a crisis. He just is always uh, revealing things to us. And. I think the thing that's really struck me the most is that how we get so caught up in the temporal, the day-to-day, -day, and when we're in the middle of shopping and, and taking care of our kids and 
buying groceries and making food and all that, we just lose sight on what's really important. So God has really been um, showing me that um, this is all a dress rehearsal for eternity. Everything that we're doing is for eternity. It's not for yes. here now. Amen it's not for that. just this moment. Mm -hmm. And this time of like realizing how short and brief our lives are and not having any control over that at all, really, um, even if we wash our hands, you know, and put our face masks on, uh, none of that really, I mean, our, our time is in God's hands. And so yes, we indeed. cannot allow faith and fear to coexist they just it just doesn't happen so if we're living in fear of the what's happening in the moment we're missing out on what we're really here for um, and so it's an opportunity for us to put our hand in God's hand and just walk through him with this and so I've been really um, pondering a lot on eternity and like Am I what, am what I do is what I'm doing today making a difference for eternity so to this morning in my um, Bible reading, this verse came, or these verses from 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to the end. It says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small, and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And man, that just sums it up, you know, keep our focus where it needs to be. If we're focused on the wrong, we, we become what we're focused on. And if we're focused on the wrong things, then we're going to end up at the end of life saying we, we missed it. This is a chance for us to see that um, life is about eternity. And so let's live for eternity today. Amen. I, I love the last part of that verse where it says it's, it's the things that we cannot see that will last. And, and it's, it's, it's amazing how in the middle of this, it's all the things that we can see that have been interrupted mm -hmm. to give us an opportunity to look towards those things that we cannot see. That relationship in Christ, that connectivity to him, that, that longing for eternity. Amen. And anyone else? Yes. Um, I'll piggyback on what Miss Cindy said um, as it relates to seeing things or not really seeing things. I know as a working mom, single working mom, rather, my children, seem, it seems like they was always fighting for my attention before when I was working constantly and they were at school. And of course, you know, as a mom, we try to do everything. We try to be everything to everybody. And so this season has made me realize and brought me and my children a lot closer because for number one they see what mommy has to do with work and how demanding it is so it gave them a new perspective and respect for what I do but it also gave me a new perspective and respect for what God has done to us because he intentionally slowed us all down we all have our individual lives I have 18 all the way to six years old wow. and at this point, everyone has their thing that they want to do. Everyone has this tablet or this new game or this new idea. And to me, it seems like God has gotten our attention and said, hey, when was the last time that you guys just did a project together? Or when was the last time you guys just set up and just read a book together? Yes. And, or did a Zoom or do a prayer, thing, anything like that. And before, that has not been our testimony. It's, mm. It was always hit and miss. It was always something to do. And so it's like he brought us back down to our foundation where we get to spend that family time together. We get to, to read the Bible together. We get to have our little, own, little mini Bible study and everything at the house. That was something that wasn't totally into play before. We was always going somewhere to do this and do that. And it was just sitting here, just sh sh listening to everyone here. And then just brought into the realization that, you know, everything was happening to what it needed to be for each individual person. Yes. You know, it was brought into, to me, I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of choked up, but it was like my children real, always said, Mommy, I want more of your time. Mm. Or Mommy, I need this here. Or Mommy, I need that there. My 14-year-old, mm. she was always struggling with that, that split household as being in a single parent. And so... 
it was always mommy, mommy, mommy. But then I started realizing that I can't do this here by myself. This mm. is the, the time that it really had to put me on my knees where I had to pray and ask God, just just show me this little thing here or just show me that little thing. And he's been showing it in multitudes and getting me and my children out there in the yard, just planting and digging and doing other, other things that we would normally not even consider doing. I would just hire somebody to come to the backyard and go do it. Awesome. But then it was like something that me and my kids can be intentional about doing. And those little things is creating more memories. It's creating that time that we needed to have together. So yes. it's, it's doing its job. <laughs> I think I was just going to say um, when we, um, even at work, when we kind of got the notice that we were all going to be going home and staying home, you know, for the foreseeable future. And I just kept hearing God just speak to my spirit, you know, don't miss me, you know, during this moment. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had some prayers. There were some things in our family that we had just been praying about and um, just kind of lamenting over. And I mean, just even at, at the worst time or when something just wasn't going well, you know, I just kept hearing God just remind me, mm -hmm. you know, don't miss me, you know, don't miss me. And um, just as you were sharing, um, Stacy, and just in some of those home projects or reading a book or doing a family devotion or just little things, mm -hmm. you know, um, same thing. We're doing those things here. And sometimes you think like, oh, gosh, was that enough? Or maybe we should have made it more memorable. But, you know, God just reminding me and bringing me back to you know, your answer is, is during this season, you know, mm -hmm. don't miss me, don't discount or don't overlook, you know, those mm -hmm. things. So that's something that that, that has kind of grounded me or tethered me um, during this time. So mm -hmm. that's been my word. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much. These are great, great comments and great interaction um, and, and, and great revelation for, for what God is, is doing. So can, can someone speak to one thing? What, what is one thing it, during this season that you would like to carry with you into the new normal? To expect the unexpected. <laughs> Learn to expect uh, the unexpected. Yes. I, when you live in that mode, you naturally you're going to depend on God as we should every day. But when we're in our routine, we kind of put him aside because we're comfortable in what we're doing and what we're in control of. And th through this whole situation with so much uncertainty, uh, one of the things that has been refreshing is when you're relying on God, you're going to talk about him more with your children. You're going to pray to him more together. Um, you're going to grow together as a family as you're growing closer to him and to, to continue on with that because we're fooling ourselves you know, I think we've all kind of talked about that a little bit when we think we're in control or any of this is about us. Um, it's who he is and he's sovereign and we are to trust in him and follow him. Um, so, I love that. I love that. I think that's a great place for us to prepare to, to wrap up. Uh, carrying with us from this um, current position into the new normal is to expect the unexpected. Life is filled with so many unexpected things. And, and, and I believe, uh, as Michelle just said, that, that God is teaching us how to trust him when things don't sh work out in ways that we can anticipate. That he is still faithful in the middle of difficulty. He's still faithful when, when things uh, show up in ways that we would not have anticipated. And, and he is still present and accessible to us. You know, perhaps there's a, there's a mom listening and, and, and looking in today who is, who is saying, I, I, I need God to touch my life in a powerful way. I, I want to close with these last few verses from Proverbs 31, and then we're going to pray. It says this. It says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. I believe that's what the Lord wants for every woman of God. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring praise at the city gate. That scripture talks about how reverence for God is what brings praise. And perhaps 
maybe during this time or maybe during some of the things that you've heard in this discussion, maybe you've recognized that maybe God hasn't been the focus for you. Maybe you you can honestly say, Pastor, I've, I've allowed life and, and sin and, and distractions to get in the way, and I've not reverenced God, feared God, honored him as I could or should. But I hear God calling me now to a place of repentance, a place of change, a place of, I like to use the word surrender. See, see, uh, coming to God is all about surrender. It's, it's about uh, giving him preeminence in our lives. It's about making him the priority. And, and maybe you recognize that God is saying to you, maybe as a mom, as a, as a married mom, as a single mom, maybe, maybe there might even be a dad out there or, or a teenager out there who recognizes even in this moment, it's, it's time for me to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to, to bow your heads right there where you are and let's just begin to pray. And even there in the chat, you can you can just click, I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus. Let's, I'm going to invite you to join me in this prayer. Just say these words after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I want to surrender my life to you. I recognize that I've gone my own way, but today I repent. Today I surrender. I need a new start. I need a fresh perspective of you. And I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And then right there where you are, go ahead and confess and just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not acknowledging you. Forgive me for not making you first in my life. But from today, I surrender. From today, I give you my heart. From today, I make you Lord and Savior. And then just say these words. Jesus, I believe that when you died on the cross... You paid the price for my sin. And I believe on the third day you rose with all power in your hand. And because you have eternal life, as I put my faith in you, I have eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you for being with us today. I want to thank this incredible panel of ladies. Come on, give them another hand clap in the, in the chat for, for their wisdom and their life experience and for what the Lord is doing in their lives. And again, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Be blessed and have a wonderful rest of your day.